This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. Two years ago, John Boehner became the Speaker of the House because Republicans gained 63 new members. In that same year's state elections, about 700 more Republicans were elected, and Republicans took control of 22 state legislative chambers. Almost immediately, we began to hear about widespread voter fraud as state governments across the country enacted laws that make it harder to register and threaten the rights of many Americans to vote. Lawrence Norton, the deputy director of the Brennan Center's Democracy Program, knows all about this, and he's my guest today, so welcome. Thank you. Can we briefly talk about what the Democracy Program is? Sure, so uh, the Brennan Center um, but, was... Yeah, go on, start uh, with the Brennan Center. Uh, the <laughs> Brennan Center was founded by Justice Brennan's clerks, um, and uh, Justice Brennan, of course, was a, a great justice on the Supreme Court, great justice of the 20th century. Um, and uh, we're divided into uh, a, a justice program and a democracy program. We also have a liberty and national security program. Um, our democracy program uh, focuses on um, the institutions of democracy, um, ensuring that barriers to the franchise are eliminated so that uh, every eligible American uh, who is entitled to vote, can vote, uh, and that their votes will be counted. Um, we focus on uh, money and politics. Um, uh, again, we're, we're looking to ensure that uh, mm. everyone has a voice, um, and mm. so that um, special interest money doesn't overwhelm uh, the system as our goal is anyway. Um, that's, that's a tough battle right now. Mm. Uh, and um, we also focus on, on other core democracy issues like redistricting mm -hmm. um, and uh, fair courts, which is looking to have an independent and diverse uh, judiciary. So you've most recently been spending most time on voter ability to vote, if, if you want to vote, <laughs> and yeah. looking at all the things that have been designed to stop that. Uh, voter from being able to easily go to a poll and yeah vote. yeah well as you said in, in your in your introduction um, since the beginning of uh, 2011 right after the 2010 elections we've seen a wave of new voter restrictions like nothing we have seen uh, in the United States since before certainly before the passage of the Voting Rights Act yeah. in 1965 the progression I would say since that time in the United States has been to expand the franchise to as many people as possible to make sure um, that everybody who wants to vote can vote. And, and this past year and a half saw um, state legislatures really move in the opposite direction, making it more difficult uh, How about, for people about to vote. 35 state legislatures at least tried to do something or thought about doing something? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And, um, and all of them were Republican except for Rhode Island? <laughs> Uh, for the most part, for the most part, Rhode Island, Rhode Island is one exception, um, and I, I would, I, I think the law that Rhode Island passed is a lot different than uh, yeah. many of the the, mo the most restrictive uh, and rigid laws. Um, but yeah, uh, twenty-five states um, passed some kind of restriction. Actually, I, I, I should. That's wrong. There are twenty-five laws. Uh, and two executive actions in, in 19 states uh, that passed in the past year and a half in terms of making it more difficult for people to vote. Um, not all of them were scheduled to go into effect November 2012. Um, there were 18 states that passed laws or executive actions, which are through the governor's office, um, that would have made it more difficult to vote this November. What happened to the others? Why couldn't they get them to be enacted this year? It was just um, constitutional limitations or something? Or yeah, there, there's it, it, different reasons for yeah. different states. In some cases, they may have thought that they, they okay. wouldn't be able to administer them in time. In some cases, um, <laughs> certain states are covered by Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, 
Um, yeah. So they have to get preclearance from um, the Department of Justice, and they knew they wouldn't get it in time. Other states tried to get it anyway, and we can talk a little bit yeah. about their, their success or failure. But it, interesting, because you're an attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And you've, uh, are, are you what would be considered a constitutional law person? Um, I, I would say I'm a voting rights person, voting and there's certainly rights. constitutional issues yeah. that are that come up. So what happens when law. you come face to face with such obvious uh, political shenanigans? Well, look, are first, you shocked? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm still shocked, even to this day, <laughs> dealing with all of this. I, I, I should say, you know, one of the core missions of the Brennan Center um, is to make sure that people can vote and their votes get counted. Um, and I, frankly, I think um, it's a core American value. Um, the, the Declaration of Independence um, right. says all men are created equal. Uh, I think the idea that everybody should have an equal, should have equal access um, to the ballot box is um, something that most Americans take as a given. And the idea that uh, politicians are manipulating that system for their benefit is, it's, just, uh, it's, it's, it's astonishing. For anybody that <laughs> it values what America is, it's, it's going to be shocking, yeah. I would say. So tell us, what, what state, but, but you've made a lot of progress, or not you alone, but people, right? Yes, there's... Uh, a lot of groups and lawyers have been working together, or...? Yeah, that's an important part of this story that I think is, is the good news that hasn't um, really been told. I, I appeared on this program, I guess... Was it six months ago, or maybe it was oh, almost a year, a year ago? ago. Yeah. Um, in any case, we were right in the throes of all of these right. um, First very restrictive oh. laws being passed, uh, and um, it is not nearly as bad as I feared um, it might have been uh, today and looking into November. By my count, so I said there were 17 um, states that had laws that might have gone into effect uh, this November. By my, by my count, um, there have been eight laws in seven states that have mm -hmm. been either struck down or enjoined or are not going to go into effect be through the courts, uh, at least in part. Um, and, and by the way, those are some of the worst of the laws. So, you know, there are different, there are different gradations of restrictive, and many of the most restrictive, uh, it looks like now, won't go into effect, although unbelievable as it is, we're, we're only a few weeks away from the election, there's still some laws where we don't know um, whether or not they'll be in effect in November. But And in addition to the courts, um, the voters um, in some states have pushed back. So we have two states, Maine and Ohio, where, the, where through the referenda process, uh, the voters got very restrictive laws um, turned back, at least in and part. And what happened in Ohio? Because it's still a problem. Yeah, there are lots of problems in Ohio. So I, 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 um, I know Ohio well. I've done a lot of work there. Um, you were actually hired by them, the Secretary of State. Yeah, the you? Secretary of State um, in, in 2009 asked me to, to chair a bipartisan <laughs> commission to look into the problems in Ohio and what could be done to fix them. And actually, we got very close uh, in Ohio to passing a law that would have fixed a lot of the problems. But um, at the last minute, um, uh, unfortunately, it passed through, through the House in, in the Ohio State Legislature, but not through the Senate. In the last minute, apparently, I wasn't there, uh, yeah. talks broke down. Uh. Um, and instead, we had, an, we, we had an election. And then you got um, a Republican. And, and we had a, yeah, a, a, much, a much more conservative, I would say, um, legislature, legislature um, that did away with a lot of the suggestions and passed a much more restrictive law. Um, so a lot of that law has been overturned, but the kind of core problems that existed in Ohio before are, before are still there. So that's one issue. And then in addition, you know, uh, Ohio is a very politicized um, election administration environment, I think. Unfortunately, they've, they've set the table for the country in a lot of ways. The, the country's kind of moving in that direction of every decision being uh, around elections being politicized. So we've had some election administration decisions that also um, may make it harder. The for Secretary of State who appointed you is no longer Secretary of State. She is not. Right. So she that's a big not. difference, right? Uh, yeah, there, there, yeah, there's certainly a difference with a new administration right. um, yeah. in terms of what their, what their emphasis is. What's the most know. egregious legislation? Which state was the most egregious? Oh, wow. Well, um, <laughs> that, you know... It's hard to say that, that, that way. That, that, it's difficult to say. I would say, you know, there, were, there, there are different kinds of laws. Um, Ohio and Florida both passed these kind of omnibus leg legislation where 
there were lots of new restrictions. So they really cut, both states really cut back on early voting. And um, people should remember that uh, in 2004, there were huge lines in Ohio, um, so, so long um, in certain communities that a lot of people just didn't vote because they couldn't wait the hours there were, uh, hours lines there were in their polling places to vote. Um, but in addition to cutting back on uh, early voting, there were restrictions on who could register and who, who, both who could register, when they could register, who could register them, so that in Florida, the League of Women that Voters said, yeah. um, we, not do it. we can't do it. Like, there are too many penalties for us to register voters. We're too afraid that the, this will put mm -hmm. us out of business. Um, so th there are these kind of omnibus bills, and they did lots of other things that just made it more difficult to count votes, either made it more difficult for people to vote or made it more difficult for their votes to get counted. There was the, the, and Florida and Ohio actually are the prime examples of these big, massive bills. Then there were states uh, like Kansas and Texas, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, that were mostly focused on um, photo ID, on requiring a certain kind of government-issued uh, photo ID to vote, um, and, and saying, you know, you can't, not that you have to show ID, because a lot of people hear that and they think that's not such a big deal, but that not only do you have to show an ID, but most IDs that you have can't be used to vote. Your student ID card can't be used to vote. Um, any kind of social security card that you have, uh, your employee card, your state government employee card, none of that can be used. Basically, all that can be used is a driver's license, um, and maybe a couple of other things. In Texas, they said your gun permit can be used. Tennessee said that too. Um, <laughs> not gun. your student ID card. That's you know that's that would be that would be bad. Terrible. But you have a gun license. Gun permit is okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, and that very much, I, I think, to a lot of people, smacked of pure political manipulation. There are certain people. Well, it's that a they great example for people who opposed it. Yeah. <laughs> Although it, I guess there's a reason in that you have to have a background check, or don't you need that in Texas? Uh, I don't. I, n I have never heard a good explanation for yeah. why Texas yeah. made that. But I mean, why should you need a background check to vote? Exactly. Um, <laughs> there's no reason. You know, uh, if you're a citizen of the United States um, and, and you're 18 years old, um, then in most cases you should be allowed to vote. Right. Um, and I don't think we want we want to enter into a do situation they have, where we're giving people in other, background checks. In other states or counties, do they have books the way we have in Manhattan or in New York City where you your name is in the book and yeah. you've already signed it and then you sign underneath it? Almost everywhere. But yeah. everybody who voted last year or the year before or like me for many years, you still have to have a voter ID when you go into the polls? Uh, in these states, yeah. yes. So it doesn't. I, I mean, and this is what was one doesn't of the heartbreaking things. Doesn't matter how many times things. you voted. Yeah, I mean, some of the stories were really, and, and, and you know, these came out because there was litigation, and we can talk yeah. about what, what happened in the litigation. But some of these stories were heartbreaking. You had people that voted all their lives, um, and you know, one example that I talk about is uh, there, there's a, a man in Texas who had voted for uh, five decades. He was in his 70s, and at this point, he's in a wheelchair. Um, and he doesn't have the kind of ID that Texas required. And, you know, Texas said, well, no big deal. Go get the ID. But the closest ID office to him was um, 50, 60 miles away. He would have had to take three buses to get there. Uh, it was only open on certain hours. And, um, you know, for somebody like him, um, who had voted all his life to suddenly be told, um, uh, yeah, the only way you're going to be able to do this, and good luck getting on, getting a bus that's going to be able to, you know, take you mm -hmm. in your wheelchair to get there, and then wait for hours. So was he a plaintiff in a suit? He was one of the. Uh -huh. uh, the and that's plaintiff. now he can vote. He, this year, and you know, I should say that the thing is, Penn, uh, Texas already had an ID law. That's the thing uh -huh. about these laws; they already had an ID law, and he had the kind right. of ID you could use to vote. They were now saying, and they they had no issues in Texas. They couldn't point to any. Uh, fraud. actual yeah. fraud that was occurring under their um, old system of re requiring IDs. Um, but despite this, they were telling him, now you can't vote unless you get this extra ID. Um, but uh, Texas is one of the states where uh, we don't have an outright victory yet, but um, uh, we have enough of a victory, the, the, the law has been enjoined for the time being, that Texas has said, we're going to appeal uh, but but for, this but for this election, people can we, we'll use the old. So law. this did this come as a surprise? I mean, I read someplace. I for, I, rem, I rem, read that in 1964, the Republican Party formed something called the Great uh, 
I forget what it's called, that started on voter restrictions. And it backfired at some point when they really had such fraudulent uh, uh, accusations that it mm -hmm. just backfired and people stopped. But this, did this come from the Tea Party, basically, after 2000? You know, I, I'm not sure exactly where uh, this came from, except um, there's no question that since 2000, um, our elections have become even more politicized. Uh, and there was a recognition after 2000. Um, Which was I think Florida. On, on, that we're on, yeah. Florida. Right. Um, and I, I think by both political parties, right. uh, that small little changes in the way you run elections can have really big, a really big impact, particularly in a close election. And um, you did have people, um, I mean, it just kind of, I think, would have seemed crazy in the 1990s, um, people running for state, never mind Secretary of State, mm -hmm. but people running for state legislatures mm -hmm. actually running on election, election administration issues, on election integrity, on the fact that elections were being stolen. Um, and, uh, you know, in 2010, um, a lot of those people got into office. And um, in that sense, it's not all that surprising. Um, mm -hmm. when, when politicians are running on these things mm -hmm. and they win, um, that the first thing that they're going to do well, the, is enact new laws. And the Democrats, though, were always known for their voter registration drives. Mm -hmm. And there's always been conflict over dr those drives yeah. when you've tried to attach a voter registration form to some other form. So that's long been a Democratic process. I've never heard, really, of, uh, of the Republicans doing an all-out uh, registration drive. Yeah, I mean, the, party. the political parties do certainly yeah. do register voters. I, 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 I will say that there has been a change uh, in this sense. I don't think that this divide between the parties was so stark. Um, well, don't you think it could tie into the majority leader of the Senate who says our objective is going to be ensure that Obama doesn't get reelected four years from now? Well, and that the same party to to you know said the same thing well certainly yeah i mean yeah. The, in in pennsylvania uh the this is this is um certainly a talking point about uh well, the guy got up and said uh, yeah now these Romney, laws yeah. and, and the, the speaker of right. the the majority leader in the right. house said we passed this law that to a, and now mitt romney will win the state or something like that for the for the for the new id law that they have in the state um uh, but i was going to say uh, well, first of all, I think election administration uh, a decade or two ago was seen as a much more boring thing. But uh, um, in addition, if you look at the history of laws in the 70s and 80s, these kinds of laws that were passed, often they were that, that expanded the franchise. Often they were passed by Republican legislatures. So, well, the uh, Republican Party was a different party. That that may be. Yeah. Um, election day registration, which is. Um, you know, allows yeah. somebody who is not registered to just show up on election day, register and vote, and it's the it's one of the one of the few things that can be pointed pointed to a, a change in the law that really increases um, the number of people voting and the number of people registered. Um, the first state to pass that was Maine, and it was passed by an all Republican legislature. That's interesting, and also you know when we look at the campaign finance now, which you'll do in the future, and see how obvious corporate interests are yeah. in our politics. Yeah. And then if you trace back the, what's, what's that called? Um, what's the group called? ALEC. Alec. Yeah. What's it, do you know what it stands for? American Legislative, Legislative Exchange Council. Right, to which a l large corporations join and pay dues and everything. That, that they, made, they drafted a model piece of legislation? They did, you know, and one of the one of the interesting questions is what I mean. They're essentially, um, you know, a, a lobbying group right. for corporations yeah. um, to help them get legislation passed that that is in the interest of those corporations. And, and uh, you know, for me, an, un, an unanswered question is, you know, I un, I can understand why um, why a company might contribute money to make sure that there are less regulations on the business that they're involved in. Um, 
uh, all kinds of all kinds of things related. You know, get, there's all kinds of legislation that might be related yeah. to their businesses. But, but why? That's where why your, your, lawyer, for... <laughs> your lawyer lay background comes. To see, if you were political, you would know immediately because the people who are going to suffer. I don't mean to say it that way, but you know, the people who are going to suffer from these voter ID votes are usually people of color, poorer people, well, people who are going to be Democrats. And if if these large corporations want the Congress to have less restrictions and less requirements and stuff, they're going to try to cut down the Democratic vote and, and, and ensure the Republican victory. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's certainly what a, a politician mm. would right. say looking at it. So you're almost too fair. <laughs> so it makes it hard. Well, I mean, one thing I will say is that a lot of corporations, after this came out, a lot of corporations got um, off, uh, right. dumped Alec. Yeah. Um, and that was good to see. Right. Um, and, and Alec dropped its project, right? Uh, sort of. You know, we, they're a very secretive organization, so it's difficult to know. All I know is that uh, they, they featured voter ID on the cover of their monthly magazine, um, and they, they, they wrote this voter ID model, voter ID mm -hmm. bill. So now we have, what's it called, Fair to Vote or something like that? This other group. Uh, oh, True to Vote. True to Vote. Right. Which is now um, having poll watching lessons and all kinds of things yeah. around the country. Mm -hmm. And that is directly out of the Tea Party. Yes. The woman is, yes. who is uh, organized that comes yeah. out of the Tea Party. Yeah. In Texas, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So the King Street Patriots. I think the King Street, it. that's right. So it's even, I mean, that side has also mobilized, I would assume that the Obama campaign has done a lot of, in their outreach and their community stuff, a lot of stuff about enrolling. Yes. So, yeah. 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 So, so what are we, are we showing? A, one of the, the, the reason they used, one of the reasons they used for this legislation is fraud. Yeah, uh, that's right. W w which, yeah. And we where have you it. found really gross fraud? Well, I, the thing that's important to, 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 be clear about when we're talking about fraud is we're really for the for the for the voter ID law and actually for most of these restrictions the only thing that they're talking about is in-person voter fraud right yeah. somebody going and impersonating right. somebody it's not there is all kinds of fraud that you could potential fraud that you could point to in election per, for instance purging legitimate voters off the rolls ahead of time um, ahead of time for, for political reasons yeah. to me is a is a kind of fraud um, using insiders, poll workers, or other officials to stuff the ballot box, to me, is fraud. They're, they're not, when officials are, when officials are, are, politicians are pushing these ID laws and other restrictions, they're not talking about that kind of fraud. They're not talking about dealing with that kind of fraud. They're not even talking about real fraud, right? They're ta right. They're talking about they're something that doesn't up. really happen. Yeah. Um, the Brandon Center has has uh, <laughs> has pointed out that your the chances of somebody committing fraud is about the same as them getting struck by lightning. lightning. Um, you yeah. you can point you can point to one or two examples uh, over the last few decades, but it's extremely rare. And I should point out. Um, uh, would be would be pretty easy to find if it was happening and and yeah. uh, under the Bush administration the Department of Justice um, at, at the at the prodding of of the Bush administration um, conducted a uh, uh, many months in fact it may have been a couple of years investigation trying to find uh, examples of this kind of somebody going to the polls pretending to be somebody else and voting um, and they couldn't come up with anything and or people they claim who've died or then they'd look, right. but they did it also, the people who were looking like, um, tr um, f fair, what's True the vote. True, True to the vote. vote. They went, they bought lists, right? And they went through these lists with the enrollment books. And if they saw somebody with an address that turned out not to be any longer an address or something, they, they marked that as a fraud. And it turned right. out not to be fraud. Right. And I should say, look, everybody's against fraud. Nobody wants fraud in our elections, even if it's one, one, one person out of 100 million every election. Nobody wants it, but we shouldn't be putting in um, restrictions that, frankly, don't deal with the issue and keep other people from voting. It's, yeah. it, it doesn't help to have hundreds or thousands of people not voting right. um, to attempt to deal and, frankly, not deal with it particularly well. There are all kinds of things that we could do if this is really what we were concerned about um, that that would um, make it more difficult for, for something like this to happen without keeping people from voting. In, is Florida the only state, I don't think so, that doesn't allow um, uh, felons to vote? 
No. Uh, um, there are a lot of states, there, there are a number of states that, um, and they're all different kinds of rules. Um, it's different in every state. And in Florida, there's a procedure, theoretically, by which somebody who, who was, has served their time could um, get to vote. But um, it's, it, at this point, it's next to it's impossible. It's so interesting, for them to isn't it? Because the redistricting back. lines are, are drawn on the population of prisons. Yeah. So you're, 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 the whole thing is so crazy. So is that going to be the next work for you? But, but it's certainly one of the issues that, that I don't mean we're felons, on. I mean changing the systems. You've been yeah. defending. Oh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think um, going forward after this election, we, we want to look. Uh, right now, it's very difficult. Yeah. To, um, I, we want good election administration solutions. There are real problems uh, in the way we run elections in this country. And, and we want solutions to those actual problems. It's very difficult right before an election, and frankly, for the past year and a half, in this very politicized environment uh, where it's more, it has seemed to be more about changing the rules for political benefit yeah. um, than fixing the system. I, a, after the election, we are hopeful that we can have uh, a much more affirmative, um, positive right. um, approach to dealing with issues. And I, one of the biggest things that we want to, uh, we're, we're hoping to work on, and this has been happening to some extent, but modernizing the voter registration system in the United States, that, that is really the source of a lot of these a lot of the battles right now around elections, whatever we call it voter ID, we call it, um, you know, restrictions on registration or um, uh, proof, pr providing proof of citizenship to vote, all these things are really about who should be on the rolls to vote and who shouldn't. And um, if, we, if, what, if we could do, and I, th I think we can, we certainly have the capacity to do it technologically, if what we could do is just make sure that everybody that's a citizen is on the rolls. When they move, the rolls are updated automatically, um, and that the information on those rolls is correct. Uh, and again, I think with computers and the databases that we have now around the country, that should be fairly easy to do, then a lot of these battles would disappear. You wouldn't have these false claims, as we're finding out, mm -hmm. in Florida and Iowa and Colorado that there are you know, hundreds of thousands of non-citizens on the rolls. We had the, 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 sec the governor and secretary of state of Florida say uh, initially he thought there were potentially 180,000 non-citizens on the rolls in Florida. Yeah. Um, now, he, all, all they have come up with after um, more serious investigation um, is one um, person from Canada um, who I have a feeling is not who they were looking for it's when they so said there were so many people that were voting illegally. Well, let's hope that um, the people who want to vote can vote this year, right? Yeah, Maybe. certainly. And, I, I, and, and again, on that score, I think um, the news is very good. Um, we're going to have more court battles before the election and then again after the election. But right now, things, things look good for most people to be able to vote without these new well, restrictions. Well, thank you. And I hope uh, that when you start your next campaign, which will be to change the system, that we can talk about it some more. I would love to. Thank Thanks, you Ronnie. very much, Larry. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.